nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, happy holidays. <laughs> um, I knew this was gonna be too bright. I just remembered at the last second that I could have put my little uh, jingle bell. It's just like bells <laughs> during the opening and I could not remember where I put that so I didn't and also my, my reindeer antlers because we didn't do Vlogmas this year, which is a huge relief. I see a lot of people doing it and I'm like, you all told me not to do this and then you're all doing it. It's hilarious. How are you? Are you guys surviving? Last few weeks of 2023. Hi Jeanette, you're, you're waiting <laughs> for someone else's appointment, nice. <clears throat> Hi Jan, hi Lynn. Oh yeah, it is cold out there, isn't it? Hi Erica, hi Dar, hi Aisha, hi Margaret, hi Mary. Welcome. Hi, Ray. How's it going? Working on stuff today. Nice. Um, all right. So I have a bunch of things I'm making and I didn't really want to advertise it because my family does follow me and I'm really doing minimal stuff this year. Like everybody's literally getting one thing from me and, um, and I'm making most of them, but it's only one thing. So I just didn't want to spoil the only thing that I'm doing this year. So one of the things I'm doing is I, uh, if you know me, you know that I used to have a really great company um, that made accessories for knitters and crocheters. And um, it was not ready to be closed, but I had to close it because of some, just some things that happened locally with the fire. So it just sort of affected my business in it was just strange ways. It was just a long story. It's no big deal. <laughs> I mean, it is a big deal, but you know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to talk about it now. <laughs> so, hi Fiona. Yeah, it's chilly there. Yeah. Hi Janine. Welcome, welcome. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the designs are now licensed through Q bags. So if you're one of those people that liked those and you're looking for some, you can buy them through Jimmy Bean's Wool, I think, or Q bags, one of those two. They're kind of the same company. Um, but I'm going to be making one today. I'm still allowed to do that. I'm still allowed to make and sell things. So uh, I'm going to be making the, a little crochet hook case for my niece. She likes cats. And my daughter, oh, I, this is, this. I'll show you this in a second. I'm going to be making an oven mitt, which is my free pattern. Right here, a little oven mitt. And these are the fabrics I'm using. Nice little pile here, right? <laughs> Oh, uh, chicken boots. It was called chicken boots. I did it for like 11 or 12 years. I don't even know how long. Um, I'm also making a neck warmer in this really cute guinea pig pre-made thing from Spoonflower that I bought <laughs> as part of, I was gonna review and kind of, not review as in like give my opinion about, but um, review all the Spoonflower 
um, bases in one video so it was easy for garment makers to know which fabrics to pick, things like that. And um, this was the sample I got for Twill. But I never did that video because, I don't know, I've been kind of disappointed and <sighs> I don't know what's going on with Smooth Flower right now. They're, they don't care about garment so this is how I feel. So I'm kind of like, whatever, you know? <laughs> so I, I moved on and now I have this really great bin of one of every single fabric they have. So um, I also have a button up shirt all cut out and ready to go, but I don't think I'll sew this today. So far I'm gonna be making the crochet hook case, the oven mitt. I'm also making a dog jacket. Did I think, did I say dog coat, dog jacket in my video? I might have, I did a little like story. And then I'm making a replacement insert for a dog bed. Those two are in shearling, so we're not gonna to touch them until we have to. But I also wanted to show you that I made my daughter, she requested an apron. So this is, this, I used to make these little aprons for her and her, you know, friends and stuff. And my neck is always like, uh, wait, where's the camera? It's a bungee, right? So you don't have to do any closures. And she, she really, I feel like she was really nostalgic for this fabric. Look at this cute fabric. It was kind of silly these fairies and it had this border print and then there was a coordinating mushroom print I made in a ruffle, right? And then the waist is also elastic. So it's not like this big baggy thing around you. And um, I made them in a lot of kids colors or kids fabrics. But so I made her an adult sized one. <laughs> I could not find this fabric. I could not figure out who the vendor was even though I bought it wholesale. I could not find it anywhere. But this is cute. It has owls and, and some rabbits. And I um, got a little ruffle on the bottom. I did it elastic. And then I did the neck as a bungee as well. So I hope she likes it. And then the oven mitt's gonna coordinate with this. So that's what I'm doing for her. And then I'm gonna, she'll be shocked when I pull out this apron because I do not save a lot of stuff. And I, I was even surprised I still had it. And I was like, you know, if I could find this, maybe I could use it for the apron. The apron's not in good enough condition to use. And I just was like, there's just not enough fabric here. I mean, she was like six years old. So I don't know. So I made the apron yesterday and I'm making the oven mitt today. Hi, Walter. Walter got a new sewing machine. Woo woo, we need like a whole emote thing just for that when someone gets a new sewing machine. It's like a new baby. <laughs> Congratulations on your new addition. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, you guys, you guys are getting commercials. Oh, that's right. I was gonna check that out. See, I, I schedule all these streams like a long time ago, like at the beginning of the month. So. <laughs> You know, the fabric for that apron, that was purely my local fabric store. I had to go there on, um, I had to go to the dentist on Monday for just like the checkup and I got to stop into the fabric store and I'm my gosh, I miss shopping in person. Um, and I just don't do a lot of it because they, they just don't have the biggest garment fabric supply, but they have a really nice selection of things. My glasses are so filthy. I feel like you guys can tell. Um, and, um, I was kind of like at the end of my shopping, I got the, um, what did I, I got two things. Oh, I got fabric for a button up shirt, another one I need to make for my brother. And then I was telling her about the fairy fabric. I didn't have the apron with me and I forgot to bring it. And she was like, hmm, well, we have this fairy print over here that has a border print and it was actually kind of cute. And it was funny that Cricket was feeling nostalgic because I don't think of fairies as being her thing. So I thought that was really funny. I think she was just being nostalgic for the apron and stuff. She tends to be sentimental that way. And so um, I was telling her and then she told, brought me over to the Ruby Star section. I always love that section. And she showed me that fabric. And I was like, this is it, this is it. I was starting to think I'm not gonna find a fabric I like. I just couldn't figure out what I wanted, you know? But that was it, so she rescued me. Totally her doing, so. <laughs> Really, Terry? I love how you have three exclamation points like you're excited by this. Are you? <laughs> I'd be like me, I don't know how to sew. <laughs> All right, I need to clear, I need to clean my glasses <laughs> because they're kind of crazy. They're really bad right now. If you knew how cavalier I was about my glasses, you'd 
probably give me a lecture. All right, that's a little better. All right, let's get sewing. So this is not a pattern, the CPN and crochet hook case. This is not a pattern I sell right now. I've thought about making it a pattern. It was not one people put high on the requested list of patterns. You can buy them from Jimmy Beans, um, Jimmy Beans Wool or Delacue, I think. I think Jimmy Beans Wool is where to go. And if you search chicken boots, you'll find them. So, but you can watch me do it. And if you have ever wondered about how to make a case that zips shut, you know, like opens like a book and then zips around the perimeter, we're gonna get to that point. Um, maybe I'll make this a pattern one day. So right now I'm binding the zipper. There's a little notions case on the outside. I should have brought one to show you guys. I, ha I have very few of my own products. I have the ones that Jimmy Beans made. They're in the next room though. <laughs> That's really cool, Terry. I love that. Yeah, you would have a sewing buddy. So it must be a cousin that you like. That's really cool. <laughs> That's really cool. I love that. You would have a sewing buddy. I love that. All right, this little flap right here would keep your tools in their pockets when you opened up the case. So when you open up the case like this, this little flap. Because so, you know, like a lot of people, a lot of people, um, you know, they'll be sitting at, at like a coffee shop or knitting in their living room or, or crocheting or whatever. And they are open this up sitting on their lap and you know how your lap angles down. That's why the flap is there. Just to kind of give you some extra protection. But say you throw this in your bag, you just shut it, but you don't zip it. It'll, it'll keep your tools really secure. I had to go to the fabric store, you guys, to buy vinyl. And it was all the vinyl that I sold them when I closed my factory. <laughs> so I sold them my vinyl at a pretty good deal. And then I had to go pay full retail for it because um, of the classes I'm teaching at Sew Expo in Washington, I need to make sure I can provide all the materials. So I was like, I should get this sooner than later. They have three of my rolls of vinyl. They're all like partial rolls, but they had this one and this one is the best one. So I took it, I was like, I didn't tell them that. The other ones are great, but they're not as good as this one. <laughs> this one was the last one I ever got from this particular vendor and that particular vendor ended up being a nightmare. So I couldn't get it anymore, but we've got it now. All right, where's my zipper? And we need two zipper pulls. Oh shoot, I thought I had my zipper pulls in here. That's funny. That's right, I took them next door. Oh my gosh, I might have to go to the next door to get a zipper pull. Let me see if I have one in my zippers over here. I need two black zipper pulls. And I might have them here. Hmm, these look bigger than 4.0. This one doesn't though. And this one doesn't. Yeah, that one does. Hmm. I can tell. Let's see. This one and this one. Let's try these. I still have a lot of zipper by the yard. This one's too small. Let's see. Hi, Rachel. How's it going? My, my little vinyl thing that uh, my chair rolls on is cracked. That's why it hasn't been working great lately. Let's see if this is the right zipper head. Pretty sure it is. Yep, that one's fine. Let's see if this one is too, because I need two. This one seems the same. Hi, Elena, how's it going? Hi, Ann. Welcome. Hmm. Four, five, four, five. Okay, they are. They even say it on the back. <laughs> Perfect. What should we 
Do we have a fun label we could put in hers? Hmm. Is there not a cat one? There's not, is there? We have the knitting fabric I made for chicken boots. But she's a crocheter. I think she would really like this little koala bear. But it says I'm probably thinking about sewing. Maybe I'll just put me in there. That's just weird enough, right? I don't have my chicken boots labels anymore. Are you back to ads? I'm sorry. Delay ads. No. I really want to delay ads. Let me just see if I can look at this right now and see if I can change the ad thing. Every 30 minutes. You know what, I'm gonna turn them off. I'm turning them off for now. I'll turn them on um, at the end. Um, I'm making a crochet hook case. Hi, Renee. Welcome. Hi, Donna. How's it going? Nice to see you. I will not get rich from live YouTube ads. <laughs> that is uh, not going to happen. All right. So let's uh, put this back on here. So we have one flat zipper that goes on the back and creates a built-in notions case. Hi, Michelle, how's it going? Really? That's cool. I love that, Rachel, who was it? Um, I talked with a lot of those folks, you know, like during my chicken boots years. Yeah, the, the setting Julie said that um, it lets them do, lets them decide. So I just turned them all off. I don't know <clears throat> if you'll get them. Hopefully that applied in real time. All right, so we have our zipper pouch. We need this one at the very end. And this, I think, goes here. We're also relying on me remembering how to make this, you know. <laughs> it has two elastic pockets. This is the outside. We need to get rid of all these. This is the key. When you're doing stiffener like this, always get rid of all those little threads. We should probably iron this because wrinkles are forever in this case. So let's go and iron this. I don't crochet, no. I know very basic stuff. So yeah, I was never really that much into crocheting. I was more of a knitter, but we made a lot of things for everybody. Like I think all fiber related crafts are cool. People would use this case for, like it was designed for knitting and crochet. Hook, knitting needles and crochet hooks. Um, double pointed ne knitting needles to be specific. Uh, but people bought it for like makeup brushes and other things. I've seen all kinds of interesting uses for it. We definitely went stash diving for this fabric too. All right, so we're gonna do this. We put this on the outside. Yes, I designed this, but it's been literally a year since I've made this case before. All right, and then this goes on the back like this. Oh, I need to, I do need to um, bind this edge. Okay, let's bind this edge too. So 
So if anyone in my guild hasn't been in the guild in a bit and you are a journeyist master or apprentice group member, there's been some changes. And so just want you to be paying attention to, for it. <clears throat> I announced the where the journeyist ended up and the apprentice group ended up a couple days ago. So just make sure you look for those posts. Don't worry, you're not gonna be like, I'm not gonna like charge you anything extra or anything. You're just gonna be grandfathered into that until you change your mind. So if you were really set on skill building sessions and quick fit, you might want to adjust things. I hope you don't, but I'm just telling you, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. All right, so uh, line this edge up here. People used to complain about the price of this case. So I just want you to think about that when you watch me make this whole thing. <laughs> because trust me, we didn't charge enough. Hey Leah, how's it going? All right, I don't remember my elastic amounts, but it basically needs to be the width of the case. I need two of them. There's a short pocket and a tall pocket. And Jimmy Beans and LQ, they sell these for less than I did them for. Oh, I don't, oh, I do. I need the serger real quick. It's right here. It's not plugged in, but that's okay. I've got the plug right here. Let me just overlock the top of these two pockets here. I have bags of uh, stuffing for this little dog bed. I think I want this one like this. All right. Oh, thanks, Terry. All right, so I can't remember now how we did this. I feel like we did this at the same time. Let's see if I do it this way. I'm pretty sure we would fold over the elastic. Always sew over the end. When you put elastic in something like this, like a casing, don't just start sewing along the bottom because this will collapse in on itself and it's really hard to get it to lay flush with whatever you're gonna line it up with. So just go down that and then I turn. We did this all as one. Like we didn't do it in two steps production sewing, you know, I'd stretch it. Like that. Is that scrunchy enough? Let's see. It's kind of scrunchy enough. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, I did the stash deep dive. I, I have this really amazing Pan. It's like kind of like a panel, but it's not a panel like it, it's continuous, but it's all these see how there's a black border around this It's all these different images like this that are these kind of folk wear folk inspired um, Motifs, there's a fox which is really cute um, There's a bird uh, I think a bear There's I, I think like six or nine different ones. And I fell in love with the fabric, so I bought a bunch with a plan. And then we changed beds, so it wasn't gonna work. My, I didn't have enough fabric to do what I wanted to do. So I've just been slowly using the fabric for other projects, you know, that are kind of cool. Oh, is my elastic twisted? I think it is. Here we go, let's fix it now. And so um, I made my daughter a new body pillow recently. <laughs> And I used this and she was so in love with it. And I thought it was so funny because I've had that fabric in my stash for so long that I feel like she'd probably seen it and she'd be sick of it, you know, but she probably doesn't pay attention to that. Yeah, of course, Walter, thank you. The best thing that helps a live stream is watching, like view viewership, this is how they count it, and um, commenting under the live stream once it's done. 
like all the comments in chat, it'll tell me you had 385 um, comments during your live stream. That doesn't really help. It's more the um, comments underneath when it's static. I appreciate it though. This, was I supposed to do this? No, I know this goes on here now. So I do this separate. This doesn't feel right. All right, so, oh, I need, um, do I? I'm sorry, I don't remember how to make, I literally do not know. I can't remember. This is something I still made up till the end. Uh, but we did briefly have a factory make them for like a year. So they did two runs for us. Hugely helpful. This is not scrunched enough, by the way. So we're gonna fix that. I should have looked at my uh, elastic amount. Sometimes you need a shorter length than what the, where it's going because the fabric will keep it slightly stretched, you know? So, Vaden bag, I made, made my lavender, I really wanna make my shirt, but I, oh, I don't know. I don't know which one that is. I'd ask in the guild too, Donna, or maybe even search. It sounds kind of familiar. We gotta grab this before it sucks back in there. Can I grab it? There we go. We don't want it too short because we don't want it pulling the sides of the case. We would never have done this during production, by the way. It would have gotten set aside. We don't stop like this. We would just set it aside and we had this bin of a few things like this in there. It wasn't ever very full. And occasionally we'd go through it and it was like Christmas. We were like, oh my gosh, there's a, a such and such and such and such fabric almost done. All we need to do is, you know, one little thing or maybe it had a big thing, but it was worth it because the fabric was so popular. <laughs> We had to always check it because you don't want a fabric to run out and you're like, oh great, now we have this one oddball thing and nobody can get anything to match. All right, get this nice and distributed. And then I have some notches at the bottom that will line up and you go straight as possible. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's a new pattern. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Once I do these pockets, we're gonna assemble the case and make the, put the zipper on. All right, let's talk about what, what are you guys planning next year sewing wise? Are you like, all right, this year was the year of whatever and next year is the year of something else? Like, what do you guys got planned? I wanna know. Tell me, what is your grand sewing resolutions? I don't like resolutions, but you know what I mean. I've been thinking about mine, especially because I've been thinking so much about the guild lately and like what my plans are. I'm trying not to let Sew Expo overshadow my whole year. <laughs> Cause I'm like thinking about that so much. I'm like, you know, there's a life after this show, Sammy. You don't need to think about just the, the, that. But I like being prepared. So I'm already like getting all my stuff together. Hopefully buying all this vinyl wasn't, it wasn't in vain because I, if nobody signs up for the classes, I will have uh, 10 yards of vinyl. <laughs> Maybe I would just do an online class then. That sounds so cool. I never even thought about that. I never even thought about doing an online class on how to sew any chicken boots. That's hilarious. That would be so easy for me. Like I, I just know it so well 
You know, like I would be, not that it's easy, it's more that I would be um, relaxed because I, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously not looking like I know this really well, but trust me, I, I will, once we sew this one. That's a little too much gathers right here, but it'll be fine. Once she starts having like her preferences for her crochet, I can always make something specific to her, but it would have been nice to have a few more gathers here. They don't, these don't need to be very stretchy. This could be a little more stretchy, admittedly. All right, and this one, this little notch right here is just to keep the pocket contents away from the edge of the case because of the, the zipper's gonna go here in this big pocket too. All right, so here we have our pockets. And then now I'm just going to flatten out the bottom a little bit and distribute these little gathers. My fingers knew exactly what to do here. Now we're gonna put this in here. All right, <clears throat> you've been selfish sewing the last minute. I plan on working some more items for myself throughout the year. Oh, that suit, Terry, it, incredible. I love, I love everything about it. I want to look like that. Like that literally was inspiring. I was like, I want to be this sharp, you know, like occasionally, not all the time, <laughs> but still, you know, you want to make a car. Oh, the real bit is a snakeskin inspired blazer. Oh, do you want actual like pleather for your sake snakeskin? Cause you can get um, fabric that looks like cotton <laughs> that looks like snakeskin. I want to know the, the character too. More pants, maybe a rain jacket. We're going to capsule wardrobe. I love this. Yeah, we're always working on that capsule wardrobe, right? You were sorry, sorting cotton twill for slash. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Hello, Heidi. Let's see. You got a reasonably fitting bra. Nice. Big. And uh, big time, huh? And a button up shirt. Next year, the plan is to tackle bathing suit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, me either, Michelle. I totally get that. But you're thinking more jeans and tailored garments. Yeah. I like that. Okay. You gotta get all the, yeah, you have a few quilt things. You have any leather projects right now too, Elena? Wait, what happened, Julie? Hi, Rosalie. How's it going? Welcome. I'm in bed doing another special day with a face full of stitches. Oh, Julie, what happened? You don't have to tell us if you don't want here. You have suiting from New Craft House. That's perfect. Oh, cool. You already have your favorite. Here's Goro Majima from the Like a Dragon series. Oh, I don't know that one. I'm going to look it up though. You had three patches of skin. Cancer. Oh, okay. Okay. You're just getting it taken care of. Well, that's good. I'm glad you can recuperate, you know? Okay. We got a couple of little smiling cat faces here. We spent so much time picking fabrics and then, you know, we'd cover them up with pockets. All right. So we're going to put our flap here in the center. And then the um, label that I've been throwing out of my way this whole time. And let's just apparently get another one because that other one will show up somewhere. That would go right here. Feels kind of vain to do that, but I think it's also kind of funny. We're going to attack this. Oh, final. There we go. And uh, make sure everything is nice and smooth. The factory would always pre-sew this whole perimeter. We didn't, but I'm gonna do it right now because I just like to think about things sometimes. Get my sewing legs under me. Let's do this over here. Is this the, no, okay. Pull this to the edge, make sure. All right, and so this is what her little case is gonna look like, like this. So she'll have it, it'll be like this. You know, there's the notions case on the back that I put the slider in upside down for. That feels so wrong. Usually we put the slider going that way, but okay. And then you open it and then all your tools go right here, which I have some tools, we'll fill it up I'm gonna give her all the things I have. So, all right, so I use half side slider. So here's the slider, right? So if it were zipped up, these would be the two sides, see? But I'm just gonna use one side of it, zip by the yard, because this gives us a nice way to um, make it zippered, so. All right, lately, I gotta catch up on some of these. 
Hi, Martina. How's it going? You're still working on your lower back. Okay, cool. Nice to see you, Martina. Um, couldn't go out on my birthday. No. Is it your birthday today? Happy birthday. I bet you're a hoot on your birthday usually. <laughs> All right, you wanna be more intentional with your sewing next year and also sew down my stash. Same. <laughs> you wanna sew through your little stash, finally make all I planned in the last two years. I love that, that's a good thing. I was thinking about in the guild and seeing what you guys are interested in, but thinking about starting a group that's just people that are focused on that, like finishing all their works in progress or finishing out their stash, like some kind of like big thing that's that's static it's there and you want to sew through it whether it's finished or your project plans you know what I mean not the usual like I'm gonna get this done this month but like a year-long thing it sounds kind of fun your mom's insisted she has asked me to make adult bibs for her and her friends but for me maybe this is the year I sell myself jeans and continue honing my shirt making I love that you know, shirt making is so great. It gives you so many transferable skills. Like you can do so much by perfecting the fiddly bits of a shirt. You got flat filled seams, you have the yoke enclosure, you have collars and collar stands, you have plackets, you have cuffs. You have two different placket choices on cuffs. It's good stuff there. I'm probably gonna teach a class on doing that. Um, Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh no, Julie. Darn the surgeons. <laughs> I, I think that, oh my gosh, I do not want to, accident, I do not want to do that. I do not want to put anyone in timeout. My goodness, okay. That's how people got made mod here. <laughs> right, Terry? <laughs> You did Cashmeret, you did the Ruby Star thing though. I think that's what uh, uh, Leah's mentioning. All right, Anne, have a good lunch. Hi, Barbara, nice to see you. Wait, is Donna's birthday too? Wait a minute. <laughs> is it Donna's birthday too? Is it your birthday, Donna? Did I, how did I miss this? Wait a minute, I'm scrolling back. Um, I do not see that. Tell me. <clears throat> oh, it's yeah, it's Terry's, it, it's Julie. I don't know why Julie said happy birthday to Donna. That confused us all. <laughs> Isn't that what, what it was? Oh, man. The chat is a scrolling. The chat, yeah. Well, I asked everybody what your plans are for 2024. It's not necessarily a resolution thing, but I think like it's we're always planning, right? And I think just thematically, it's things just start over, you know. So you ta you're taking an apprenticeship at a sewing atelier next month. Ooh, that's exciting. I want to know about that. It's not on his birthday, but happy birthday anyway, Donna. <laughs> yeah, they were looking for more people to do that, but yeah, I don't know when that started. Cool. All right, let's put in our, um, our, our, our majiggy. We're going to bind this at the same time, and yeah, we're going to do it all at once. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. The most important thing with this is finding the center. So I always had it marked on here and it was always this line right here. Okay, so we're going to start like this. So I have the teeth to my left and the tape to my right. And we're just gonna let a, like, a, a, like a four inch piece hang past the center, but we're not gonna sew up to the center. Here's the fold right here. We're gonna start back here and I'm gonna put my, um, do I want it right there? Yeah, we're, we're gonna fold back the binding like this. And we're gonna be, we are the boss of this, so. That is cool, Walter, yeah, that's a good plan. All right, so. 
we're gonna pour this and now I curve the corners so very awkwardly I push my finger right here at where the the teeth are right here I kind of push my finger keep my binding smooth and just do a couple of stitches while I turn it so this way the method I'm doing is going to leave the part where you pull that's going to be sort of loose and hanging down below the case <clears throat> the other way is to make it so that it sews the end sews into the bottom of the case I'm not doing that way today so I ran out of bobbin Hello, Chippy. That, you know what? That is sometimes the hardest thing to do, right? It's sometimes the hardest thing. This looks like white, not off-white. So we'll wind an off-white bobbin and hope we have one by the time we get around. And we, we should, we all have enough. <laughs> Let me put my bobbin winder, set it up here. Yeah, Rosalie, is that uh, in the States? I don't think of very many true ateliers here in the States, besides in New York City. May maybe there's some in LA, but I, <clears throat> I'm not sure about them. The thing I worry about with things like that is if they're truly an experienced tailor or if they're someone who worked for five years and now, <laughs> you know, is like, I'm going to have a business doing this, you know, that's always my worry. And then I'm going to make YouTube videos and TikToks about it. And it's like, no. <laughs> All right. So I, we didn't sew through any of our vinyls. So we don't have to worry about that. But now my machine's winding a bobbin in my cream thread. And then by the time we get around, it should be full. And we can swap it out so that when we do our last stitch of our binding, it will match the thread color. It's white to cream, but that's something I would totally notice, so. <laughs> oh, that's nice, Julie. <laughs> what a sweetie. I haven't been able to work for a while because I've been just laying there helping with my reintegration. Oh, that's cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know, we did, I've worked with programs like that before, a little differently. Um, and they were actually really awesome. Oh, you're in the Netherlands and they're established. That's awesome. Cool. It's like a re, like ones I worked with were retraining programs that gave people new skills for a variety of reasons. All right, so now I'm pulling my zipper underneath from that pocket, just past my needle here, because I don't use a zipper foot. There's no really need to use zipper foot for this. I used to make uh, the, this in about 25 minutes, start to finish. All right, so that's why I was like, yeah, 54, 54 was the price we ended with. It was cheaper when I first started. All right, so now here we are. This is the crux of the how you do it. So I'm sorry it's so dark. We'll pull it down here so you can see a little better if you're interested in this. So here's my uh, piece that I'm starting or ending with, and here's the one I started with, right? So we're just going to pull these out of the way now, and I like to just kind of a sharp, you know, pull. And then just to get it out of the way. And I sort of have to flatten it out with my fingers and then pull it over. And then now we're going to keep sewing with the binding and the zipper tape pulled out of the way. All right. And then same over here. I sort of flatten it out. And as I get closer, pull it out of the way. And when we get to here, all we need is our binding to go up to this folded back part right here. I don't even backstitch. So there we go. This is what it's looking like. <clears throat> like this. We have a lot of extra there because I just pulled a pre-cut piece. And now we need to trim 
the perimeter here and in this curved sort of shape. Hopefully you don't have much to trim. You really want this thing to be symmetrical and you also don't want it to zip wonky. And sometimes if you are overzealous trimming one side, it will be like a little, like, that actually won't affect the wonky factor, but it'll visually, you'll notice it. We have a little extra trim. I'm not trimming the zipper tape, just the excess that hangs past it. The factory, I don't think trimmed anything. That's another key when production sewing. The less you trim, the faster you are. All right, now we're gonna flip this. We're gonna check our bobbin. We have enough. And we'll wind another bobbin since we should always have two of every color when, when it's these kinds of colors. I don't do two of every color, just the bigger projects or the, fat, the colors I use a lot. I'll put this back. All right, so now we have our case, right? So I pull this and we're gonna start here and we just keep the zipper tape out of the way. And we just need to turn this under and cover our original stitch line right there, right? That's all we have to do. And this is the front of your case. So when it's closed, right, there it is. So this is the back. So I'm gonna start back here. In fact, this right here should have been over here. This little um, start stop. I just couldn't remember where it went. All right, and then I'm just gonna pull this. You need this. It's just, it's stiffener. It's the um, stiffener I always use. You can use something like Pellon 70. It's not quite as stiff, but it's the same. Or just, just something, nothing fusible. <clears throat> well, that's funny. There was a big discussion about that thread in the um, chat today. Okay, um, all right, so now the corner, let's, let me show you what's happening here. So my zipper right here, it's kind of sneaking out. So I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna pull the coil and pull it toward the case just to get make sure it stays out of the way. We don't wanna accidentally sew over the coil. We also don't wanna accidentally make this seam allowance bigger than it needs to be. We just need to cover our original stitch line. This is why you don't wanna ever trim too close when binding because then you'll leave nothing inside the binding you want to fill up the binding, right? Now I'm just pulling that zipper tape. I, I really just pull it really firmly and just get it out of the way so I don't have to worry about it. Turn this under and then I use my awl to keep that fold really close to the stitch line. Oops. I may have to go back and fix that. And when I get to these corners, I, I fold it. I'm pulling really hard, my needle is down. And then you see, so this is what I'm talking about. So you don't wanna trim these corners too much because we, we should be able to fill our binding all the way. And I trimmed a little too much here and here. It'll be fine, but <clears throat> it was unnecessary. In other words, if I pull this over farther, right, to give it the illusion that it's filled up, this stitch line will end up right here, right? We want, we want our stitching to land inside here. That's why you just wanna barely cover the original stitch line, it's your guide. So I pull it really hard, then I let it relax. And now I'm gonna lift up, pull that corner again, make sure it's out of the way. We do not want to clip our coil. The other problem with clipping your coil is that, yeah, maybe you can just take out the stitches and it'll be fine but there's a very good chance that you'll damage the coil chain. And then you'd have to unpick all of this to be able to fix it. So you don't, you don't want that to happen. Have I ever, oh yeah. Are you taking off Walter? See you Walter. Have a good one, congrats on the machines. <laughs> oh yeah, I have sewn my finger. Um, Right, am I making you nervous? Because right now I don't feel like my finger is in any way close to the needle. <laughs> Pro 
probably looks like it, but sorry if I'm making you nervous. This is why I really like an industrial too, because my I can um, control this with my foot. And I feel like I have more control. So now we're on the front of our case. So this is the more visual side. It felt a little thick there, but it's really just the top of my my um, elastic pockets. So here we are, last corner. So I like I push that in there, I pull really hard, I tighten all this up. Bias stretches, so it wants to do this. And then I use my awl to hold it. And see, I'm holding it away. I'm doing a lot with my hands. I'm just pulling that chain out of the way again. Folded, pull. And then I use the awl and I push down the fold against that seam, the like stitch line so that it doesn't go any further. I'm not the best at this, I will say. Um, I've hired people that were better than me at this. <laughs> Especially because I really um, got ingrained in the way I sew it and it was really hard to break myself of that, And um, but I would try because they had such great techniques. All right, so here we're at the beginning. We're gonna cut this little thread here so we don't immortalize it. We pulled the tails away. All right, and so let's just check it out and see how we did. This is the inside of the case, so I'm never really too hard on myself. Um, you know, we see a little bit of stitching right here, and this might've been when I was tacking the whole case to the um, stiffener. Is it a big deal? Probably not because we're about to put a zipper here and we'll probably never look at that. Look at those little birds, they're so cute. Oh look, it looks like it's holding my label. I love, this is one of my all time favorite fabrics if you've never heard me say that. Um, this came out pretty good. It's a little sloppy right here. I felt this happen. I'm fine with it. Um, sometimes unpicking things leads to disaster. So we, we were nice to ourselves. Okay, so now we're gonna, Line this up. So this is the other key thing <clears throat> is we, we need this to be the same length. If we pull this a little further, you'll get a case that does this when it's closed, right? You don't want that, right? You want it to look like a book. So we need to line this up. And so I put my finger in here and I'm pulling both sides, lining them up and holding my case so that it looks flat and I go all the way down. Same thing with this corner. I pull it really forcefully, both corners out, come down here, and now I match these two up like this. Try not to pull one more than the other and let this slide, because it wants to slide right here. I hold it really firmly, and we're gonna trim these equally. Now don't let go yet. So this determines how long this tail is. And really, you don't want it to be too short, but you don't want it to be too long. This is too long right now. We just need it to be about, like, let's say that's about an inch and a quarter past this edge here. I would do inch and a half if you're new to this. And so now we're gonna put our slider on here. Now this is the other part where your case, hi Chantel, uh, hi Nancy. Um, this is the other part where you can get this a little bit off. Oh, I made this kind of short. Definitely go with inch and a half. So now you don't want this to get, make your case wonky either. So check it. Don't just go, oh, I'm almost done. All right. And then put your zipper slider on there. Go up to here, put your little thing down here. And then when you go to zip it up, you're like, oh, what happened? <laughs> This looks, this looks really good. I'm actually pretty pleased with this. All right, so now we're gonna cut a little piece, um, four and a half inches, and I finished this. This is the fiddliest part of my whole case because I never figured out a better way to do this. <laughs> so basically I would just fold it, right, in half, right? I'm gonna sew across the bottom edge here. Oops. I gotta do this my I gotta do this in my own little rhythm. So I'll t I told you what was happening, but now I just need to do it without talking. <laughs> Hi Allison, how's it going? 
This is, uh, I'm making a crochet hook case for my niece who started crocheting and super into it. And this was one of my chicken boots designs. Oh gosh, not straight, not straight. I even broke my thread. It's okay. We're making a bunch of things today. I'm just doing a bunch of holiday sewing that I didn't really want to broadcast so that my family didn't know what I was making for them. So <laughs> I'm pretty much done with this one. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is make an oven mitt, which is actually a free pattern on my website. I'm just trying to straighten this out a little bit. There we go. All right, so now let's get rid of these threads. Pull this to the edge here. Tuck it all in. Like this. Oops, I really made this too short. That's why I'm having to hold the case up like this. It's a nice length when it's all done, but it's pretty hard to sew. I've only done about 50,000 of them, so that's kind of why I can do it. All right, here we go. Just wanted to look at this thread right here. And what is this right here? It's a little extra thread right here. I don't know where it's attached. Where's this, what is this? It's just like a loose thread maybe? Maybe it was when I started the case. All right, that's really cute. Let's put her crochet hooks in there. Well, not hers, but I'm giving her the few I had. I used to have a bunch because of photography. You know, like we would just take our pictures of our cases full and I would have them at shows, you know, for set up so people could see them and feel how secure they were. So this one's kind of big, um, but it's a knitting DPN case or crochet hook case. And if you want to buy one, you can get it from Jimmy Beans Wool because they licensed my designs and they're cheaper than what I sold them for. And I'll put a little zipper pull on here. I love this fabric. I think this binding goes really good with it. It's so cute. Ugh, oh, look at this little. <laughs> Hi, Diane, how's it going? How can I be sure? My family is not watching my live streams. <laughs> You're so cute, Michelle. You're so cute. <laughs> I don't even think, my sister and I are like, we're close, but I, like, I don't think she's ever even watched any of my YouTube things. I actually have wondered if she knows I YouTube. So, like, it doesn't, that doesn't matter to me. My mom watched my first one ever and then texted me, you're doing good. <laughs> um, my husband and my daughter occasionally tune in. And we all know that when they do, it's because Loki, like, a to B or whatever, right? So, yeah. Hi, Jan. I said hi to you. What are you looking for? What are you, what you're looking for? Fun fact, crochet can only be done by the human hand. They haven't developed machines that can replicate crochet. That's not true. Hi, Judith. How's it going? I haven't seen you in a bit. I feel like you're no, you're like a, um, a a movie star. You're not a movie star. You're a TV star. A TV voice star. Your show is so cute. I can't even remember the name of it though. I'm so terrible. Um, but I thought crochet chains could be made. Maybe not like crochet things, but yeah. Yeah, my mom is really sweet. <laughs> are you sewing much, Judith? What have you been up to? Um, all right, this is the oven mitt I'm making. It looks like this. It's a very, lots of pieces oven mitt. I know they're simpler ones, but I wanted an oven mitt that felt secure, that fit in my hand. And, um, you know, it comes in three different sizes and all the, there's instructions, all the pattern pieces. This was my, my um, copy, so. 
<laughs> I miss you too. I occasionally see some of the things you post on Instagram. I'm not very, I don't really like scroll Instagram much, but you know. Okay, this, okay, this is, uh, this is the part that goes on top of my hand like this, like this. I think the most confusing thing about this is how many pieces there are. So let me show you. Mimic crochet or just even, oh, okay. It's all, really? I thought like a crochet chain would have been, you know, like for, I'm not surprised, but that's pretty cool. I love that fun fact, Leah. All right, so I'm using this heat resistant stuff. Can you see it's kind of shiny? It's got like a metal, I, maybe it's not metal because it's actually a heat resistant thing. It definitely is shinier on this side. I don't know which side to put toward me. All right, so this, it goes like this. So this is the like part that goes like this. And then these are the other side of it. So, all right, so first we're gonna do, we're gonna, um, we're gonna sew these together. Oops. There is a video that comes with this that doesn't bumble through it like I am right now. Oh, I'm, but you know, then your sewing machine will be ready for you when you're ready. Okay. That makes sense, Rachel. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I feel like, uh, Judith, that was me when, like, <clears throat> I, I became a mom and I couldn't really be creative. I would, like, go to Target, right? And I remember being like, I gotta stop going here. Every time I come here, it costs me $200, right? And uh, my friend said, you know, shopping is a sign of wanting to be creative. That broke me of that habit in a second. I just started being like, all right, I'm gonna try and do something creative. <laughs> so I, I feel that. Like you can't do what you really wanna do, but you gotta do something kind of adjacent to it. And I think organizing, it's great, because that is creative too. It's just different. Insole bright, yeah, I think so. Um, it's not really an emergency blanket, but it, it could, maybe it's used for that, I don't know. So this is to protect your heat your hand from the heat rather than conduct the heat. Does that make sense? I just top stitched that because I like how flat it makes it. I don't really need to do that. I'm, I'm literally trying to remember how to sew this one too. I'm hoping I'm doing it right. Some of my first ones I made of this, I had bought an all clad um, oven mitt and it had these, I don't know if they were silicone because they were heat resistant, but it had um, silicone right here, things that were kind of grippy and clear. So I cut that thing up and used it for so many of these little oven mitts. All right, so this is, this is the base of it, right? And then this will go over the hand to hold it onto the hand. So this is going to match the apron I made for Cricut. So we need a little piece of elastic in here. And this is what I need this for was how much that I need <laughs> for the elastic. Okay, four and a half, right? Okay. Yeah, it, it really helped me, Judith. Like, I, I think that's fine. If that makes you feel good, fine, right? Like shopping for fabric could be also a really great creative outlet. At the time though, because I was sort of like, I was disgruntled. I was kind of like, every time I come here, and it was new, Target was new to our area and it was a big deal. I'd lived there for, <clears throat> I don't know, probably, 12 years at that point, and there's no stores like that there. So just to get so many cool things that were convenient for us was huge. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to just make a little casing here. And um, 
you know, it was kid friendly in a way, right? Your kid could make noise in there. It was no big deal. So, but then when I was like, I can't really afford to do this. Why am I doing it? You know, <laughs> my friend said that I was like, it's over. <laughs> see you, Elena. Nice seeing you. If I don't see you before next year, happy new year. Come to the Guildiversary party at least maybe, or maybe tomorrow's stream. <laughs> moving boxes oh my gosh I always do this with my right hand so I don't know why I'm struggling like that all right when I pull this through here what I do is I get this except that this buckled see how this buckles you don't want that kind of like what I was telling you guys earlier stop it there grab it and it's still hooked to here, but I'm gonna sew it down. I'm gonna get this edge a little flatter though, just like that. We don't want that to collapse in when we pull it. So we're gonna stitch it across and then I'm gonna pull this across and I, I usually hold it with a little bit stuck out, let a little bit slide in, hold it and then sew it down. All right, and then there's the little elastic tunnel. Let's do one more. I have two goals next week. So I used to be really good. Like the last two weeks of the year, I would... Like, like pretty much like, yeah, the, like the last two weeks, basically like, like school break two weeks, right? That time I would always sort of take it off, you know, and I would, but I would do sometimes like a big project, even if it was work related, but just something I didn't have to do, but something I was like, this would be great. Like redesign my whole website, you know, like I would do a big thing. Like a couple years ago, I did the guild, right? And, um, this year, my goal, I have to edit one big video for somebody and it is a chunky one. I think I saw, I think I just saw, I recorded, I think 32 videos for it. I mean, some of them are two minutes long. Some of them are 20 minutes long, but um, I have to edit that. Um, but I think that'll go really smoothly. I just jinx myself. The other thing, my only other goal is to play around with Procreate Dreams. That is my goal I really which is the new um, animation app by procreate I really want to play around with it I'm no animator I am hardly even someone who can draw but it just looks so fun you know I'm just going to tack this to the um, case here or not case <laughs> we just need to bind the perimeter and we're done with the little oven mitt I hope you guys are getting your holiday sewing done while I'm just jamming through mine. Gotta use my awl here. Flatten this out. My daughter is a baker. She's really into making bagels from scratch. That's her thing right now. Um, she also does pastries, but the bread baking thing there, I have never gotten the hang of that. And she is a freaking savant at it. I do not know where that came from. <laughs> I'm so impressed by it. I'm like, what? You're, you're baking bagels? I, admittedly, she's just like, bagels are really easy. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> so, oh, fun. Ooh, you brought mac and cheese to a party. That's a, that's a good one. God, I haven't done a potluck in like over 10 years. <laughs> All right, let me stop struggling and grab my awl here and pull this to the side. All right, so here it is. We just need to bind the edge now. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, here, we can catch this in here. Good, we know this now. 
So if you had something that was a little more heat resistant for this side, that's what I would do. Let's pull this out right here. Look, it's already pulling out. That's why we're gonna make this sit better. Just inspect it now. Get it out of the way so you don't have to fix it later. That's my, my lecture voice. Holiday knitting? Oh. Are you still making the Arn and Carlos Christmas balls? They really are, Nancy. I think the casserole carrier is a free pattern too, right, Barbara? All right, so this is probably big enough to get around. Um, let's maybe find a smaller piece or something. Is this a smaller piece right here? Yeah, let's just use this one here. <clears throat> Do you think I should use matching thread? Me, me either, Terry. I don't even eat bagels, really. I, I like bagels a lot, but I just don't eat them. She makes whole wheat ones for me, though, because <laughs> she really wants me to eat them. <laughs> nice, Judith. Yeah, I should put the link in chat because it's a free pattern. I'll try and remember to put it in the description after the stream. I can't add anything to description before, before the stream's done. <clears throat> but... Um, yeah, there's no gimmicks on my site. Like, I don't even have you sign up for a newsletter list. I got rid of that, so. It is just a free pattern. There's a few of them on there. All right, so now I'm making a little hanging loop. I find this to be kind of handy. But mine at home, what I did was I took a little piece like this and then I took a really tiny magnet a really tiny strong magnet. I slipped it in here and like I made it really short. And then I just tucked that in to my uh, oven mitt. I think I put it on this side like this. And then I can magnetize it to my uh, toaster oven. So I have one on my toaster oven and I have one hanging by the oven. So let's just iron this real quick. See you, Rosalie. Happy holidays to you too. Thanks for coming. Good luck with your apprenticeship. That sounds so cool. What an exciting thing. And I have my, my bin right here of uh, finished gifts. Like a little dragon hoarding my things, you know. All right, so let's do something like, let's just do that. Let's trim this though so we get rid of this uneven stuff. It's kind of thick through here because of this edge. Maybe I don't need all of that. Maybe that's a long enough. That's pretty long enough. You know, most loops are just never long enough. That's why I'm kind of fussing around with it. So if, if you were to get this off the hook, would you go like this to get it off the hook? Or would you go, I think I would. I think I would go like that. I'd like get it off the hook and start putting my hand in. So we'll do this way. It'll hang this way. All right. Skip the label on this one. It's kind of, the label's kind of big for this thing. All right, so now we just need, oh, I need that. <laughs> oh, do I need to change my thread? Dang it. I feel like I kind of do. That would work. Um, that's this one here. It's not a perfect match, but it'll it'll work pretty good. I could use move that there. It's like once the thought enters my head that I need to change the thread, I I can't stop thinking about it then. You know, it only takes a couple seconds, so might as well, right? Oh, that's awesome, Nancy. You're, uh, I'm really enjoying your advent calendar <laughs> adventure again. You've gotten some really cool stuff. That's a, that's a good advent calendar. I saw someone post an advent calendar for like Chanel and it was the worst things, like the assortment of stuff was, just not 
I'm sure it was a really expensive advent calendar, you know, like 600 or a thousand dollars. And it was pretty much junk. There were like a couple of things in there. I was just not even, I'm not even do stuff like that, but I was so interested in what they got. Okay. We're going to bind this outer edge. Um, and this is the side you're going to look at the most. So we'll start from here and we're going to start away from all this. So let's just do it right here. Do a little further down. It's a little straighter. Oh, you're back. Oh, nice, Elena. <laughs> Welcome back. Mafio, hello. How are you? Nice to see you. Happy holidays. I just hate how baby hairs get caught in glasses. It's just one thing you just can't ignore when it happens too. Let's flatten all this out. I made a, um, a Santa one of these for when I was like marketing this. <clears throat> it's still brand new in my drawer. I keep forgetting to get it out during the holidays. I used a, a vintage looking, it wasn't vintage, but it was vintage looking linen uh, toweling. It was like by the yard or something. It's really cute too. Okay, so same thing. I, I always just go up to that folded back edge and we can probably trim down some of this area here because we know this is a little thicker. We don't want to trim down this very much. Remember, we want to fill up the binding, right? Always fill up the binding. It looks nicer. And this time I have this orange on top of the black, so we got to be a little more aware where we're stitching. Oof, kind of catches and starts wanting to cut even though you're like, wait, not there. Hi, Anne, you're back too, nice. Yeah, it's a, I think it, it's definitely the best one I've seen. Mostly, probably most of the vlog, Vlogmases are dedicated to opening advent calendars, right? What are all the advent calendars out there? The one you do, who's your, yours by, Nancy? Okay, we're just looking it over. All right. Get this. I usually get that side folded, then I do the other side, not together. Again, I always pre-fold. I'm very firm. I'm pulling so hard right there. It doesn't look like it, but I am. My machine really holds things. All right, and so we'll put that little fold edge just past that stitch line to cover it up. This fabric has little gold, uh, like shiny stars on it. It probably just looks like solid orange to you. <laughs> But it did coordinate with the, the, this fabric here. I feel like this fabric coordinates with this fabric. This fabric coordinates with this fabric. These two don't coordinate together very well. But they could be from different collections. <clears throat> Ruby Star is really good at sort of blending their fabrics from one season to the next. I'm pretty sure these aren't all th three from the same collection. Not definitely not a fabric nerd when it comes to designers and stuff. So I, this little elastic area can be a little tricky, so I'm just forcing it into the binding, kind of lining it up because the elastic wants to pull it out a little bit. Just telling it no. This this looks like a different color than that. It's literally the same fabric. Got a weird little fold there, trying to get rid of it. Bad. I fell off a lot more. Let's see, um, can you see that? Try and get it to focus, like right there. 
but it's really not that noticeable. Oh, this is noticeable though, look. But you do have to, yes. <clears throat> and their color selections are definitely not traditional. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's well padded. It's got a heat resistant interior as well. I did not notice this when we were doing our inspection. So I'm kind of hoping that this happened. This isn't actually in that first stitching I did because th that'll be harder to fix. I'm sort of hoping that this is um, in the, the last. No, it's going to be in the first stitching I did for sure. For sure, I did not see that. So we need to take out quite a bit. This is why you inspect things really well because you don't wanna to have to do this much unpicking for a half inch, <laughs> right? Oh, really? That's cool, Sherbert. <laughs> I made the moon booties recently and I love them. I wear them every night. <laughs> They're so cozy. I love them. And the nonstick worked so good. Okay. So we just need to get that little piece of raw fabric. See right there? All right, so let's take out just a couple of stitches right there. And hope it's enough. Because we can sort of ooch that in there. Take out maybe one more right here. And one more over here too. Maybe a couple more on this side. There's like a little fold. Sorry, it's so dark you probably can't see it. But I imagine slippers like this though, if you bound around there, you'd look a little like a duck foot. Quack quack, you know? Could be cute though, especially for kids. Is this where I'm fixing? Oh. It's not where I'm fixing. What's that little fold there? It's just loose binding. A little tuck. A little tuck. Where's that? Where am I working? Here it is. <laughs> okay. I just need to get this in there. All right. So. I'm gonna try and sew a little bit of this here, but we didn't really unpick enough here in order to do the right sides together thing, you know? So I like to fix it all the way. I would have to pull this back, sew it right sides together and then turn it. We didn't really pull out enough to do that properly 100%, we're gonna do it most of the way. As long as we get some of it, we'll be able to then edge stitch it closed. Because if I just edge stitch it closed now, it won't, it, it won't look the same. We love binding, right? <laughs> I know, speak for myself, right? So now I'm just pulling this, hoping I can, I'm not gonna back stitch just so I can fix it if not and, uh, all the puffiness. Just pulling that layer out, the one that we just fixed. All right, that'll do. So for this right here, we wanna get rid of this. Back this up a little bit.
gosh, I'm, I'm trying not to grab something else. There we go. Okay. Let's pull it to this side. We'll pull the loop to the side so that that little cut edge is on the side, which is less visible. All right, now we just need to edge stitch and we're done. Okay, back on track, hopefully. These are always the fussiest little fixes. Sometimes that <clears throat> can ruin the whole project, you know? You know what I mean, jelly beans? Not my prettiest binding. It's a stocking stuffer to match the apron. No. The oh, this apron right here. This apron. Ugh. So now she has a little matching. <laughs> okay. Cool, I'm happy with that. Got a mushroom and a butterfly. I really didn't have much fabric left. All right, so now, let's talk guinea pigs. <laughs> so the guinea pig, I'm not, I don't have a whole lot of like hopes that this will be the most functional neck um, microwavable neck thingy, um, because of the shape of it. But my mom loves guinea pigs, <laughs> so I couldn't resist this. And I make the, I make neck pillows for, that's a, I actually have that as a free pattern on my website too. We made those a couple of years ago and those were kind of a hit. Like my daughter loved hers. That's another thing I could probably make her. I have to go get rice at the store though. So I'm not gonna be able to finish this today, but I still have, sorry, just whacked the microphone. I still have the um, funnel I made using a scrap piece of vinyl. So that's cool. I'm glad I saw that. I saw that the other day. So I was like, okay, good. Coming to get ya. Right, sure bear. I know. I, I feel the same way about binding. I'm like, what's wrong with binding? Like, I just like it, so I use it. Um, and I, I was terrible at it when I first started sewing. I just kept practicing, figuring out what worked. And there was no internet then. Not like there is now. There was no sewing on the internet. You couldn't, like, Google it. I had to figure it out. So, yeah. So, yeah, so I think, like, this shape, I think it's a little like shallow, like it's not going to, you know, wrap around your neck, right? Because this, this like right here is so small and this isn't very long, but it'll still be a nice, like maybe warmer for the bed or <laughs> foot warmer, I don't know. Um, and I got this on spoon flower. It looks kind of like, uh, like up close, you can see it looks like, this looks like crinkle and this looks like, it, it looks very kid made. It's cute, it's really cute. So I'm just going to sew around the perimeter for this one, that's about all I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna leave it open. Let's say we leave it open, I think like over here. That way, I think that'll be more comfortable to have the seam there than here, <clears throat> just in case I had to edge stitch it. So, oh, I feel like I could do a shorter stitch length too. <laughs> we don't need that rice sneaking out, you know? I did a lot of research when we were making these a few years ago. 
And flaxseed is supposed to be the best thing to use. I think it holds the heat the best, but it's pretty expensive. So I used rice instead. I'm gonna go around it again because I didn't change my stitch length. Those stitches actually look pretty small. It felt like it was going pretty quick. That's why I thought the stitch length was kind of long. All right, and then we're gonna, we're gonna cut into this a billion times here. I'm gonna go get the rice after work today. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Lynn, that's always a fun one. I, my machine, it's not the best for sewing piping, mainly because my zipper foot sort of isn't the greatest. And when I ordered two zipper foots from Waywack, I did not get something that would work for my machine. One of them was this really weird foot that stuck out like over here was really unsettling when I tried, when I put it on my machine, I was like, oh, I don't like, I don't even understand like why the foot would be over here when the needle's over here. It was really weird. And then the other one wasn't the right foot for my machine. So I've struck out twice now and I just, I could just put a tiny bit of effort and I would find the right zipper foot or just return those. But I just at the time didn't. So, and the, the zipper foot that usually you see with the Juki, it's just a extremely narrow foot and your needle sews down the center of it, not off to the side, which is fine, but then you don't have a whole lot of traction. There's not a lot of purchase on the fabric of your, with your foot. So it slips around a lot. I feel more accurate just using my regular foot and, and just muddling through using the, um, you know, wider foot against things. This is kind of thicker fabric. It's a twill. It's not that thick, but that's why I'm doing a ton of clips. Because I don't think this is going to turn and look as cute as it does right now. I'm just being realistic. I think that this is way better on fabric than it will be sewn up. No, 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 like disrespect to this idea. It's just, it's a cute idea. I think it needs a little bit more to make it actually be the right shape, you know, spoon flour. That's right, yeah, spoon flour. It's just a little panel that you can get. There's a lot of these like um, panels on spoon flour and, and it'll have directions on how to do it, just printed right on there and you get the whole thing. With the twill you get, and it's not like, you're still buying it by the yard. So if you were to buy, you know, one and a half yards, you would get a lot of, guinea pigs and it would show you on the screen what you were actually getting. So I got like one, I ordered a fat quarter because most of them will fit on a specific fabric size. So um, if you were to order a swatch, you're not gonna get this whole thing, right? You gotta order at least the fat quarter because that's what they made it. And because the twill is so wide, I got one and a half of these so the other half of it is like, you know, it's like this half of the guinea pig because the fat quarter is so wide. So you just have to bear that in mind when you buy these things. So make sure you look at the screen because that's what you get. Oh, well, this turned, okay, good. I did a lot of clips, that was good. So now I just need to fill this. Oh yeah, lentils would go good too. So you can see it's just not very deep. You know, like you're not gonna see like a little face hanging down like this, in other words. But what if you got two of these? This is what I would do. If you, if you love this idea, you have a guinea pig lover in your life, you really wanna try this out. I would get two of these fat quarters and I would cut it like maybe like right here. 
and um, I would do one half like this and then I would cut the other one like right here and I would sew this into here and then you'd have one long guinea pig. <laughs> you know, it won't look out of proportion because it, it, you'll see this and this hanging over and then you'd have like, you know, instead of like right now I have this much hanging, you'd have like this much and this much. And you can see where my hand is back here. That's what I would do. It did turn out nicely. I think that's a pretty cute. And she'll think it's funny. She had a, a guinea pig named Coil, and um, he was a real cutie. Okay, so we've got that. We just need rice for that. So now we're gonna do a dog sweater. Another thing I do not remember how to sew, but we'll figure this out and it's gonna be no problem. So let's change, oh, this thread color will work. Okay. So I'm making Michael a button up shirt. He picked this fabric out and I had a lot extra. I was like, oh, I'm gonna make Loki a matching jacket because it's so ridiculous. And we would totally make fun of people that do that. So let's be those people so we can be made fun of too, right? A ferret, right? <laughs> I don't know if my mom would appreciate a ferret. <laughs> All right, so this is a pattern that I drafted and then like a year or two later, Closet Core came out with a free dog vest pattern that comes in lots of sizes. So you could check that out. It looks really cute. I know I have it, but I, I just, don't, I know this one works for Loki because I made it for him. So, so let's make, uh, wait, we need to put our Velcro on. I am not certain that Loki isn't watching. Yesterday, okay, so let's see, wait. Um, let, me, let me do some maths here. I, I wish I had cream. We need one of these and we need one for the neck too. Wish, yeah, I wish I had cream. Yesterday he was on the couch and Noodle got up and laid next to him. It's kind of crazy. Michael sent me a picture. Where'd the other one go? We can't lose it. Oh, I found the label. See, I told you I'd find it. All right, so we have these two and now we need some hook. Hook now ruined from being anywhere near my batting and my Shearling, I, when I cut this last night, I cut it like right before I left and I shook it out. <laughs> I used the restroom before I left and I looked in the mirror and I, and I kid you not, I had a fluff here, a fluff here and one right on the center of my head. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Good thing we're just going to the car. All right, so. And let's just round the corners so that they're not pokey on him. Velcro can be pretty pokey. Uh, do single layer, that went terribly. Yeah, they are up pretty, no they're not. Are they up pretty late? Okay. I think that this one could be the neck and this one's the belly. All right, so we're going to we're going to sew this Actually, we'll sew it like this with a round edge and the straight edge towards the round. All right, and now we can do, I oh, hope I remember to do this correctly. There's two pieces here. Why does this seem longer? 
cheerling, man. This stuff shortens your lifespan. It's so annoying. In fact, we're gonna do it from the plaid side. It is a school night. It doesn't feel like it. Like last night I was hanging out with uh, my friend and he's on holiday break. And so it feels to me like the weekend. I, I kept forgetting that <laughs> I had work today. <laughs> All right, I didn't quite make it to the end there. It's probably the pile. So let's do that. Oh, this is probably the worst part. Oh no, no, this is actually really easy. It's almost 9 p.m. Oh, that's not too bad, but that is kind of a long time. I'm not late. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I usually up to like midnight myself, so. I would, I don't think I could hang out on a live stream though. Not that late. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna top stitch this. Make it a little firmer. I feel like the, the flannel could have probably used a little bit of interfacing. I just made my stitch length back to normal. So we can make sure this looks like it's straight because of the plaid, right? I sort of already did this wrong because I wanted <coughs> stuff is going to make me kind of itchy. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. See, I think it's just in the air. People are off work and stuff. I wanted this hook to be um, on this piece, not this piece. Because when it goes along his belly, I just didn't want this to touch him. It's not going to bug him. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, baby. Oh, there's a holiday DVD? I didn't know that. Okay, so now we have this one and we're going to put this one on top like this. <coughs> Shearling man. If you sew a lot of this, make sure you wear a mask. I don't even feel like it's flying in the air right now. It might just because I'm talking and it's dry. Oh, this is a collar. We're doing a collar on this one, by the way, because it's funnier, right? Okay, let's see here. I think this is such an excellent use for flannel scraps because there's not a whole lot you can do with a flannel that you used for making a shirt, you know? I do have this one idea that I'd really like to do and it's to um, make like a, like an open cardigan, just like, like, you know, the loose, like, I don't know, cardigan that hangs, that's long. <clears throat> but I wanna use all of my knit leftover pieces and make stripes. And I, what I, what I, here's the crux. I really wanna work on sewing the knit together in a nice flat way that doesn't get wavy. I think that would be kind of fun. Just as a, a um, experiment, it's a drop. Never fancied Big Bang Theory. How are we friends? What? Wait, wait, wait. Terry, wait, 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 wait. Terry, I thought you didn't make it through that. You finished that? You finished it? You watched it? That makes me so happy. <laughs> it was really good, wasn't it? The scary stuff gets less scary, right? 
That's very good. Now I'm going to be sending you uh, the, um, you watched it. Oh my goodness. I didn't know. I would have been grilling you for your review. Um, now I want to send you like, th there's people who've done YouTube videos where they take out all the gameplay and it's like they stitch it all, all the cutscenes together like a movie. So then you can watch the original. They're much longer. Well, they're not much longer because if you were to string all those episodes together, it'd be like a, a I don't know. Like I think the first game is probably like a four hour. And then the second one's more like like nine or something. I can't remember. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, here we go. Here's our belly, our belly strap. I feel like this feels, it feels okay. This will be fine. Um, my pattern originally, I had made it so that there was a seam down the center here and then I left a hole for the leash to poke through, right? So I could put the harness on and then the this over the harness and then, you know, attach the leash. This is just for running around our property, so I'm not doing that. But that is something to think about if you want to do something for your dogs and you need to be able to hook a leash. I wouldn't hook your leash to the vest. This kind of Velcro, very secure. Other things, may, maybe not. So I, I would just think about that. Make sure you keep it in the back of your mind. All right, let's make our little collar. Our little ridiculous collar here. And then um, we have this Velcro for the neck strap here. What, I've never heard of Asteroid City, what's that? Is that a show? So I was thinking of making this collar so that the top is the, um, this is what shows on top, just because it's funnier. <laughs> Hi Sarah, how's it going? Right now, yes, a doggy jacket. We are making a doggy jacket right now and it's gonna match a button up I'm making Michael. <laughs> so my thinking is that when Michael's opening his button up, I'm gonna slip this on Loki really quick. <laughs> I literally got navy blue thread out, so I don't know why I'm using the cream, but it's fine. So, okay, so here is the jacket, right? So this will be on Loki. Do you think the collar should go? Oh, it is? How did I not know Wes Anderson came out with a movie this year? Okay, so should the collar go like this, you know? So this would be Loki walking around, right? Don't you think that the fleece up is funnier and cuter? Or it could be like this with the shearling poking out the edge. What do we think? Plaid up or shearling up? <laughs> In lieu of a seam, I made two extra large buttonholes, Phoebe's leash. Oh, that's a great idea. You're working on being open-minded. Oh, Sarah, I love that. Yep. And um, just to be that nerd, they're not zombies, okay? Shearling up. Okay, cool. I like that you agree with me. I think it's cute. It'll also be like cozier towards his face, you know? All right, here's my center notch here. So we'll lay this on here. Oh, this is what my note meant. My note, I wrote a note to myself saying, make collar notches <clears throat> for the collar along the neck. I thought I did, and uh, all I have is a center one. This is why I have to start at the center and work this way. And then I'm gonna flip it and go that way because I don't have a notch to where this ends. That's what I was telling myself. Now we know. 
can't believe I haven't caught the shearling yet. Usually I can't sew it with the, against my foot. So it'll get like stuck on the toe. You knew it was coming. They are not, no, oh, did I burn out a bobbin thread? Wait, we just filled them. Oh, we didn't fill it all the way. Where did I run out? Did I, this was the last thing I did, right? Was the uh, top stitch. Good. But we already started uh, the other bobbin, so we are good to go. This is why you always have one winding. Yeah, that's how I feel there, exactly. That's why we're doing all of it today. <laughs> this is it. This is the only time of, oh no, Julie said that, sorry. J Julie's and Sarah's, your icons are kind of in the same like tone of colors for me because they're so small on the screen that I get you confused sometimes. <clears throat> I only sew shearling this time of year. Yeah, they're not undead. It's not mystical, you know? I saw this really funny post once, cause, and I have thought this exact thing. So I, oh no, I just did this wrong. Um, so I thought it was really funny. And they were like, how come in all the zombie movies, nobody is like, oh my gosh, zombies. They don't know what they are. They've never seen them before. And they don't even call them zombies, right? And I totally agree with this. Cause I feel like, wait, they're living in the same world we lived in when this whole tragedy befalls them. This isn't the last of us because they, they aren't zombies. But um, why are we pretending like they've never heard of zombies in their world? Do you know what I mean? It's weird. Like you just want that one young person to be like, oh my God, this is like walking dead. Or, oh my God, it's a zombie. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the character development, the story is, it's incredible. Wait, do you see part two? <laughs> I loved part two. Loved it. The Just in case you guys also are interested, um, there is a really excellent podcast that follows that sh the show, the HBO show along. There's one that follows the sh game, but you don't have to worry about that. But the... Um... <laughs> Hi, Karen. How's it going? <laughs> None of it's far-fetched, ex exactly. It's not. It's not, Julie. You Big Bang Theory hater. I'm just teasing. I'm picking on you and it's your birthday. I'm terrible. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, 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 what's I going to say? Oh, so there's this podcast and it's, so follow me along here for a second. Okay. So the person who played the voice of Joel in the game, his name is Troy Baker. He hosts the podcast interviewing Neil Druckmann, who's the creator of The Last of Us, and the showrunner, um, what's his face, Craig Mazin. He interviews them throughout the entire HBO series. And he also, you know, so he's literally the voice of Joel. Like, he is, like, the iconic part of, one of the iconic parts of The Last of Us besides Ellie. And so he um, is the perfect person to have the perspective of the whole sh the story and he is in The Last of Us show on HBO. I can tell you, but you, you, it's a spoiler too, if, not for the story, but if you want to be surprised. But um, he's in the, um, the, my least part, favorite part of the game, the part with David. So he's like David's like right-hand man. It's not that much of a spoiler, but he's in it. He has a little part. So It's a really good podcast, though, because you understand certain things that you probably wouldn't unless you listen to it, so. Well, yeah, Ash Ashley Johnson is in the podcast, but not till the very end. So I don't want to, people to think, oh, cool, Ashley Johnson's in it too, because she is only in it at the end. And I adore her. She's the voice of Ellie in the game. But like Pedro Pascal and um, Bella Ramsey, who play the characters in the show, who are amazing, they aren't in the podcast either, so. And it's fine. 
So, okay. Yeah, I know, even though the story was written like way before the Panini. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. She is also in the show, and it's that's a spoiler, and that is incredible. And I cried through that whole episode. And my husband didn't know all the things I knew. So I was like, I didn't really want to be that annoying person that knew too much. So I would just would try. I would only answer his questions if he had a question. Or I would just say, I just have to tell you the irony here because this person played this person. Or that person actually is the person in the video game. Things like that. So, yes, there is. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah, it's inside the game. Yeah, you can, do, you can find them on YouTube, too. All right, here's her little jacket. It's coming along here. Um, I think we put these on at the last, right? But we do need these on here. My thumb is good. My thumb's fine now. You've never heard of The Last of Us and you've been hanging out with me for how many years? <laughs> well, it's it's my absolute all-time favorite game. There's The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2. It came out in 2013, the first one. And then the HBO did the series and it came out last year and it was incredible. They actually made it better like it that it wasn't a, a same adaptate time kind of ab adaptation you know they actually for all the people who played the game they actually gave us more content which was really cool so she does uh, yeah my dogs do too i'm making a little dog bed insert it's the last thing i'm going to make today and it's uh it's this stuff stuff on one side you do Shanna. okay <laughs> yeah the yes it is sarah Gustavo Santalala. <laughs> He's actually in the podcast. His music is incredible. That's my ringtone. <laughs> I'm such a nerd sometimes. Okay. All right. So here we go. Um, I, I feel like I did this wrong. I should have curved both ends, but, you know, here we are. So let's see. We want to, yeah, we want this up and then we want this on the Sherpa side. So. I could just do this too, like, right? Let's just try it. I, I think, I really do think these things are really pokey. So this isn't a fancy thing. I'm just, you know, slapping this together, obviously. And then trying to convince all of you to watch this incredible show. That's all. Yes, I am a nerd. I do not care. I make no apologies. I've even won. I have a Last of Us hoodie. <laughs> that I won in a live stream. I couldn't believe I won it. I was like, what? I didn't even know I entered, <laughs> but I was thrilled to get it. It was, it's cool. All right, so this is gonna sit like this. So we just need to make sure we don't, you know, put this on wrong, right? So it's gonna go like this. So then we want this one down the other side. Yeah, there, it's definitely, they definitely do a good job at illustrating really how deadly the world is that they're living in. Oh, this looks like I missed a little bit of the... Okay. Oh, wait, what did you... What did you say, Elaine? I might have to make one for my daughter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? I know, exactly. I, I felt like the ones we found, too, they were, they just weren't, they weren't very nice. You know what I mean? And Closet Core has that free pattern, you know, so maybe it would fit Walter. I The other two I made, I used scraps of flannel, and I quilted them. I don't know if you remember that. They're kind of funky looking. Oh, I just took, I think I just took a picture of Loki wearing one the other day. But, um, let's see if I can find it. Hopefully it wasn't just in a text. <clears throat> oh yeah, so here, 
This is, this is the one I'm making him right now. So I took flannel and I quilted it in this really cool way from this book. So, oh yeah, see the, I took all my flannel scraps and then, oh, I bound this. Oh, I bound this. I'm so glad I looked at this. Oh, I don't know the placement of either of the straps. They're, oh, they're all too heavy. Oh, oh, right, 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 yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, oh shoot. Oh, I have to tell you guys this funny story. Ray is the only one knows about it. So I was in a Zoom, um, the master Zoom the other day with Ray and it was only me and Ray there. And I was making a knit top for myself. Um, and I, I kind of was like putting it ahead of things to make because I finished something for a video and I want to photograph it and I wanted this particular color knit with the, as the top to go with the pants, right? So I just kind of like made this little pattern. So I made the pattern and it's um, just a short sleeve knit scoop neck top but right here across the front I put a yoke seam right here and some tucks right here in the yoke, very shallow yoke. Um, so um, I was being very careful because I was like, this is kind of an experience. I'm sewing tucks in knit. Um, I'm doing this yoke. And at the last second, I decided, you know what? I'm going to burrito sew the yoke because um, it was kind of getting tricky to clean finish between the neckline and the yoke seam. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to do it as an experiment. So I roll it up, you know me, I never use the, the burrito method, but it's the only way the method that would work in this case. So, because it was so, the yoke was so shallow. So I, <laughs> I um, folded it up and closed my whole, I rolled up my shirt, put it inside this yoke. It's very slinky knit, so it was rolled up tightly in there. I line up the two edges and I sewed the yoke shut, right? So now it's in this little burrito thing. And then I pulled out the shirt to turn it right side out. The whole shirt came out and it was not attached to the yoke. I had forgotten the, bye Elena. Um, I had forgotten somehow to put the shirt layer between my two yoke layers in there. It was the most funny thing. I really wish it would have happened a live stream for the people that are just like, you know, I never do anything wrong. Ray was my witness. Yes, it, yeah, that's so true, Sarah. Yeah, give it a, give it three episodes. Does that get you to Bill and Frank? Isn't Bill and Frank like get to Bill and Frank, and then you tell me you quit that show? <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> but yeah, it was the it was the funniest thing. Like literally, my whole shirt's rolled up in there. I very carefully pinned the edges of the yoke together, turned it right side out, and I, my whole shirt just came out. I was like, what? And my yoke was still inside out. Oh, man. So I had to take that whole seam out. It was such a pain. Oh, it is? That's the one? Okay, yeah. Yeah, my face. Oh, yeah. It was uh, not my uh, brightest sewing <laughs> moment. It was so funny, though. Okay, yeah. I think we'll, we'll bind this edge. I think it'll feel thicker, you know? This feels like it could use some, um, I don't know, some an inner lining. Oh my God, this stuff is such a mess. God. All right, so let's line this up. What are we gonna do for binding though? What are we gonna do for binding? Hmm. I don't actually know. Yeah, that, that actually, I wasn't even mad because it was so ridiculous when it happened. I couldn't believe I did that. I was so careful. So yeah, that was pretty funny. You, oh, right, Judith, I know. It was so, balled your eyes out, you guys, but it's, it's the most love-filled, amazing, episode it's so they did so good they did so good 
Oh yeah, yeah. I'm trying. I am trying that show. I don't want to say it um, out loud on uh, YouTube because I don't want to get demonetized. But yeah, Ozark's very good. I love that one. That one's tough. That one almost got manipulative for me. I felt a little bit like, mm, where's this going? All right, we we need a binding. We need a binding. Let's see here. I have some of. Oh, I don't have enough of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really have anything that's pre-washed. Oh, this is kind of, this will kind of work. What do we think of, oh no, this isn't gonna work. What, oh, could this work? Oh, I have to change my thread color. Could that work? I don't know. Hmm. Let's see, we also have, we have some snowflakes, but we have this, this could work. This is washed actually. I'm about in the gold category. I literally, I have ghosts. <laughs> um, um, scared of Ozark. Travelers. Oh, the Travelers sounds familiar. What's the Travelers? <laughs> okay, I have a uh, Snowflakes. Eh. Um, I have this like um, plus signs. Well, they're plus signs on the grain X's when they're on the bias. Of this, this could work. Actually, this could work pretty good. Um, and then this one has gold. It's got, got uh, shiny gold. Ozark is is more like it's um, ten, it has violence in it. <laughs> you know, like drug drug violence. And not the the kind where the people who are selling the drugs, that kind of violence. <laughs> I think this will work. I kind of like the rustic vibe with this. What do you guys think? I think that'll work. Remember, it'll be like this much too. Huh. Oh, it is, Shabir? Oh, okay. A group of people will time travel from the future to try to stop us from destroying ourselves. Oh. The back side of the darker blue one, this one here. Hmm. It's got, I want to say like a greenish tone to it, if that's the right term. Yeah, that's the one, that's the violence I'm telling you about. That could work. I think I'll do this. I am hoping I have a thread that will work. This could work. What does this go to? <laughs> These are two different blues. I don't think this is one of my cones though. Oh wait, maybe. Maybe it's this one? No. Um, I have this weird thread that Helen from Helen's Closet sent me and I've never used again. Let's use this because I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what about this thread. Wait, this isn't it. This is the weird one she sent me. She didn't send me this, sorry. She sent me a green thread. This is one of these. Um, it's this one here. Okay, cool, that'll work. She sent me this thread and it bounces off of the spool you know what I mean? Warehouse 13, Lola Show 2 is on sketch. I haven't, I think I've heard of that one. I loved Breaking Bad. Did you watch Better Call Saul, Nancy? I have to admit, I was, did not want to watch that. It looked really stressful to me, uh, like his character. Amazing and definitely one of my top all-time TV shows. Loved it, loved it, loved it. That, that, uh, I, yeah. 
I can't, uh, I can't even describe why it's so good because it, it's, it just saying that it's the character development, but it's so much more than that. It's really, really good. I thought, I actually thought Better Call Saul was better. Why is this not going, this looks like it's going through the hole and uh, it's not, let's see here. Okay, let's just start over here. All of a sudden this feels like the smallest hole ever. <laughs> what happened? What's happening here? That thread just broke. You couldn't get into Better Call Saul. Oh, um, yeah, that might have, that might have taken a few. Okay, there's not like a. Okay, I was starting to get suspicious that my needle was broken. <laughs> you couldn't get into Breaking Bad. See, Breaking Bad for me, I have this thing about manipulative shows, and when and like one thing that when a show is manip like Lost, Lost was very manipulative. Really liked Six Feet Under, became manipulative. Sopranos. Could not pull for those people anymore. Yeah, the sewing fairy was messing with me. Um, Breaking Bad, I was like, okay, I don't know. We're pulling for kind of a bad guy here, but that, it, it, it does have, it, it works out. It works out. It's fine. But I, I, had, I had some qualms with it. Better Call Saul, way better, <laughs> I think. And I never, I would just, I don't know, I just wasn't sure. All right, we're gonna bind the perimeter of this because I think that'll give it a little more like umph, you know? This jacket's feeling, even though it has the shearling, it feels kind of lightweight, especially compared to the others that I made for him, which were quilted flannel. Ooh, come on, why are you? Oh, there's a pin in here. I was like, what's happening? Undone, okay. I quit six thing, you know, six feet under two. I quit Lost, I quit Sopranos, all of them. I was like, nope. I have a, I have a little trouble pulling for bad guys and glamorizing it. I know it sounds like such a goody two shoes thing to say. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, for me, and I've said this before, it's when they, were interviewed they had no idea where that show was going like they didn't know their own plot i was like wait a minute what story are you telling then you were i feel like they were trying to um they, they were manipulating us they were reacting to what we what we reacted to and i don't like that i don't need that any more of that in my life you know Grim, I liked that one too. Didn't that one get kind of off the wall? <laughs> I started watching that one too. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to re-sew a lot of this binding, by the way, because <clears throat> it's it was lined up and then when I get closer, the, the pile shearling is pushing it away a little bit. That's what I keep checking, because I keep looking at it and going, all right, is it still pretty good? forgetting anything. We're going to put the straps on at the very end all the way through the layers. Okay. Did we catch it all? We barely caught it there. And how does our, how does our collar look? Looks okay. I think we're okay. It's not the, uh, the nicest looking sewing. This is doable, but we're just going to give it a little more seam allowance there. The belly strap will definitely secure this and give it some umph through here too. Hi Tigger, how's it going? Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Well, I'm so glad. I try to be instructional. Sometimes I'm, I'm not, I'm not really paid by anybody to do that. So sometimes if you need instruction, just ask me. <laughs> Or if I'm not telling you what I'm doing and you want to know, I'm happy to share. I'm not trying to hide anything. Okay, let's see here. 
You'll also see uh, some Aussies and Kiwis here too. I don't know if anyone here is right now though. It's a little early, right? No, it's not a little early. I'm gonna go out to lunch today. Don't tell Michael, but I'm not a big, big fan of what he's been picking for lunches. But I need to go to the store to get rice. So I was like, I'm gonna get lunch today. You guys are just reminding me that's my plan after, I never like leave right after the stream. So I, 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 I and I'm gonna go to the post office box too, which I haven't been to in a while. <laughs> Okay, let's clip this neck seam a little bit. This is a little trickier because I'm feeling like I can't really see where my sewing is. Let's we'll get a little bit in here. You're telling him, no, <laughs> Julie, I deserve that. <laughs> The, the joke right now is that it's like he knows what I ate for lunch too because he'll serve the same like genre. Like um, I'll have like uh, ravioli for lunch and then he'll make uh, pasta for dinner. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't say, I don't want to say anything but sometimes I have been, I've been kind of picky about it. I'm like, oh, I just don't want to have more pasta. You know, I am very thankful he cooks. I don't expect him to though. Bates Motel, see that sounds like a scary one. I don't like scary stuff. I know you're gonna laugh at that because I like Last of Us, but it's different. All right, let's see, do we think, we bound this, we don't have to worry about it. Why am I, I'm not have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about this. I've been watching some of the Star Trek, um, the newer uh, series, because we have a channel that gets them right now, and I'm really enjoying them. Which, the, which is the one with the woman named Michael? I like that one. Um, like, that's her character name. I really like that one. Terrible name, sorry. Even the music, oh. Playing games has helped me with that. The Last of Us, I mean, if you heard my whole progress with that, I had to stop. I got so terrified in that game that I put it aside and my friend helped me get unstuck. But the sense of accomplishment I had when completing that game was so amazing. I felt so proud of myself. <laughs> that I went on to do it in the hardest difficulty. I get the platinum trophy, which required a ton of this terrible multi, well, it's not a terrible multiplayer. The community plays it's kind of terrible. But I did it. All right, so I'm just binding this perimeter edge, obviously. Cleaning up the shearling really good. I might have to put this in the dryer to get all the excess shearling off of it at the end. Okay, I need some advice, you guys. Hi, Nathmi, how's it going? Nice to see you. It was really scary. Oh, oh I don't know. Okay, so um, there's a counselor next door to me, all right? Really nice lady. Uh, she shares her office with another counselor that's kind of new. They have one of those really nifty little devices that plays a, like a noise canceling sound, you know, like um, white noise or whatever, a thunderstorm. And she puts it on, because basically I told her, I'm like, I just want you to know we can hear everything through your, your door. I, I can hear their talking in there, but I can't hear what they're saying through my wall. But in the lobby, you can actually hear everything word for word because of the vent above the door. So I told her that and she's like, okay, cool. So she got a, like at this noise thingy, right? So for a few weeks now, it's been on the sound of crickets, outdoors, crickets, things like that. I like that sound a lot, it's fine. But lately, I'm over it. I need a different sound. So what do you guys think? Do you think I can just like, I don't think she cares what it is. She just wants to make sure people aren't overheard, right? 
So do you think I should just say something? I don't want to sound like, you know, I'm really glad she uses it because, uh, you know, I, I, I would appreciate that if I were in there. Do I just change it? It, it is, it's a pretty, it's a very, very high pitched crickets. And so it works really good. But I like white noise, like white noise would be totally fine. I can't hear it right now because the door's shut, if it's on or not. Um, but it's making me shut my door. So um, would you guys just change it to something else? Like if the device is sitting right there, do you think she just wouldn't mind? Or should I say something like, hey, do you mind uh, we switch it up? <laughs> something I hardly ever run into them like it's like you know they open the door a new person goes in the door shuts so what would you guys do are any of you counselors like what what would be the like I'm fine with the thing I just need a little different sound for like can I can I just switch it occasionally <laughs> the client only has to hear it for an hour I have to hear it for two solid days you know what I mean Sometimes three solid days. Oh, 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 here's the kicker. The psychic who is next door to her got one too and put it on the exact same sound. So it's a lot of crickets. And this is the other funny thing. My daughter is named Cricket and my text tone for her is a cricket. So, you know, um, I sometimes will hear a glimpse of it and I'm like, oh, she's texting me. I feel a little selfish. <laughs> the shearling fills up the binding edge. Like it makes it look good. And you know what? It don't matter what it looks like on the other side. The other side is shearling. You'll never see it. So yeah, maybe I just change it. Maybe I'll change it and put a little note and just say, I hope you don't mind. I was just wanting a different sound for a bit is that like <laughs> I really don't feel like I have any clue when I'm sounding super demanding because I don't really think of it as a criticism and people sometimes are way too sensitive well in my opinion <laughs> like I just am like it's nothing personal so why take it personal but I know people will so I try to now navigate it a little bit better because uh like I don't mean anything negative about it I just need something different right yeah Sarah I like that I like that uh, like it's just for me it's just it's just you know I just want something different <laughs> I need something different <laughs> It's not driving me cr absolutely crazy quite yet, but it's about to. Nah, I, I don't know if I can do that. I think it's too late for that, Nancy. She really literally got the machine because of me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm thinking, Rachel. Two for what? Yeah, right, Lynn, exactly. Um, Julie gone straight to the heart of the matter here. <laughs> so I know the white noise was, she, she used that for a while. I like that one. I know that it's noise drives people crazy. I like the other one even better. What is it called? Like brown noise. I don't know if that's on that machine. I've never looked at it. Well, I couldn't believe I heard it like one night when the psychic was here. Cause I was like, they're not here. They're not when no, no one's next door. And she got the same little machine. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I am here a lot. Look at this little collar. Look at this. It looks so cute. I can't wait to put this on him. <laughs> All right. Um, so we need the, the, these things on here now. I, I might have to wait to position these, you guys. Because I may need to figure out where they go on Loki. Shoot, I wish I could finish it. When am I going to check this? 
It's like an episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> That's true. It really is. See, I think I feel like things like that have warped us, right? So, yeah, I think so, Ray. They don't hear it at all. Their door's shut. They can't hear it. Me, I I hear it because my door is usually cracked, and I leave my door cracked so people know someone's in here. Because we have neighbors and stuff, so I will definitely post a picture. Maybe the guild. <laughs> I think this stuff's going to look really gross after a while, but this is really cute. <laughs> what are the requirements for shirt and shacket? What do you mean? Requirements for what? Okay. Well, this turned out really cute. Like, this turned out even cuter than I thought it would. Oh my goodness. This is lightweight, lightweight enough that I think he could be in the house with this, maybe. He's been hanging out in the shop now with Michael, uh, who's been woodworking in there. Um, uh, so, you know. All right. Okay, my last thing that I'm sewing today is more of this blasted stuff. <laughs> well, she's she's pretty cut and dried. Like I feel like the counselor herself is isn't interested in small talk, isn't interested in making friends. Totally fine with that. But I feel like she also doesn't give me much chance to talk to her. So it's almost like bye and like leave. You know, like she does not want to engage. And it's not because she doesn't like me or anything like that. If she doesn't, I don't care. I don't take it personally. Like it. I don't think I bug her, in other words. Like, there's nothing I'm doing of bugging her. So, um, oh, I want, I mean, does Michael have to wear a shirt if Loki's wearing a jacket? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I like that, sure, Bear. Yeah, you just, say, you just say that word to yourself, Ray, over and over if you want. She knows how much I love that word. I'm going to iron this. Okay, so this, oh my God, look at all this stuff. Um, this is just some scrap fabric. And it's a little dog bed that has a removable flat insert that is disgusting. Like I wash it, but you know what I mean? Nothing is bringing it back. So I just thought I would replace the insert. Ray is going to be on the naughty list. Tell you what. <laughs> yeah, she just gets on with it. Exactly. And I think sometimes, like, when she's leaving during the day, during the day, sometimes she walks out with the client. It, it feels natural to do that. So. The other one does not want to talk to me at all. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Even though you're illegally renting, I won't say a word. <laughs> okay, um, we're going to leave an opening for some batting. We'll just leave the blue thread on. Why not? Did we really get this? Nope, it's just... <laughs> I'm making sure it's lined up over here. It, it's pretty much lined up. Let's see. We don't really want it to be too off, but we can see a little bit over here, right? Oof, static, man. This is one of those things I feel like this little project will make at least a few of you go, I've been meaning to do that for a while and you just did that in 10 minutes Why have I been putting it off because that's me right now. <laughs> I've literally been meaning to do this for like six months and here we are, we're getting to it, so. Hi Andrea, how's it going? Nice. How are your uh, sewing plans going? I know a bit about them. Okay, we'll just leave like that much of an opening right here, right? 
The shearling will be the uh, up in the bed. <laughs> okay, we're going to trim off this rogue piece here. I just knew the I measured it. I'm hoping I'm remembering the measurements right. Yeah, exactly, Terry. Exactly. Plus, it's like I don't really buy gifts for the pets. I mean, I do, you know, like like treats or something, or maybe one new little toy. What is a string? Where is this coming from? Is this coming from my bobbin drawer? It is. Oh, you passed your exam. Congratulations. You are now a midwife. That's big. Oh, nice. Oh, good. We'll enjoy that. Yeah, so this will just set inside. It was 19 by 25. I measured it like a long time ago. <laughs> So let's hope I'm remembering it correctly. This fabric is a fabric I made for chicken boots. And I, I, <laughs> I had it printed, I was like, oh, this is way too big. So we scaled it way down. <laughs> okay, where's the hole? Here it is. I thought it was, I thought it was over here and then I didn't find it when I was over there. All right, so we get this. So I think what I'm gonna do is stuff it and then quilt it. You know what I mean? Oh man, it's so staticky. It's, I don't feel the, or I don't hear the crackle, but it's definitely clinging. Let's go to the ironing board for just a second. Oh, smart, Andrea. Yeah, that's right. It's not summery or let's try and get this over here. And that over there. Get this a little bit smoother. Even though it will be the other side up when it's all done, like in the bed. Maybe in the summer it could be this side up, you know? But in the winter, it'll be the shearling side up. Okay, now we can stuff it. This is, this is a great stash buster for um, batting. <laughs> Cause I have all this, I have leftover batting from making my dress forms. Could probably zoom out a little bit. I love how I just sat there smoothing that out, but I'm about to stuff it. I, th I think I figured out a way to zoom in and zoom out without doing the thousand clicks I do right now to do this. I haven't had time to work on it, but I'm going to. Okay. I love that I just smoothed all that out. You always need more of this than you think, too. I'm hoping I have a little leftover, because I'd like to make um, an insert for Haku's bed. His little bed that I made last year for Vlogmas is such a hit for him. He lives on it. Put the little heating pad in there this time of year. Doesn't leave it. Oh yeah, this is plenty of batting. Okay, I still have some batting left then. Yeah, that's pretty thick. You love how much progress I am. Yeah, right. That your your the word you is covered by that little like react. This little heart here. I'll do it. I can actually do it myself. There's my hearts. <laughs> Me too, Michelle. But you know, like, I think the key, honestly, is the planning, cutting it all out, absolutely making sure you have everything ready to go. That is the most time-consuming part of projects, in my opinion. The sewing can kind of happen when you have all that ready, you don't have to worry about any of it, you know? So I was here till kind of late last night, like till almost seven, like 6.30, seven, <clears throat> just making sure I had everything ready. All right, so now we're just gonna edge stitch this shut. 
We're not going to hand sew it. None of those shenanigans right now. Actually, let's do it from this side. It'll be easier to sew on the cotton. Ugh. Dogs do not need me to hand sew this. If anything, Loki hates it when I start hand sewing because it usually means I'm closing the hole of a, uh, a stuffy that he just breached. <laughs> but we can't really afford for him to swallow another squeaker, you know? You know what, I was going to quilt this. Look at this little pillow. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> um, I actually, I will quilt it because you know how it'll, it'll get like broken down. So we'll just stitch maybe a few places here. I don't know. Is it gonna fit under the machine? Mm -hmm. Maybe I could tie it. That's a good point, Mafio. I didn't really think it would be this thick. It could. Do I think it'll quilt nice? I don't know. I'm just sewing. Stitch length long. It works, but you're right. Not ideal, Mafio. Let's just tie it. You know, like I could use some yarn and tie it, because look at that, it's very, very much too tight. I think I was thinking about this going under the machine because the old one is so smashed now. It, does, it doesn't have very much loft left. So I was thinking, oh, I'll just stitch those lines in it when it's done. And I wanted to pre-quilt it, but I, you know how when you do that, like I could have pre-quilted it, right? Just, I was thinking you could just do like three, ch two channels, two, so three sections. So just do maybe from here to here, right here. Pre-do that before you stuff it. I didn't want to do that because I was like, oh, but then it won't be fluffy right there. <laughs> it won't be soft. <laughs> so let's just take this out and I'll just tie it in a few places with some um, hand stitches. So I guess there will be some hand stitch happening. I could, I'll just leave that one as one right there. You know, we'll just do it. So yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that too, Ray, but I wasn't sure about getting the end sewn shut. Oh, so let's see our uh, a horde of presents that we made here. Let's zoom out a little bit more. It's, it's not very thick, Sarah. I know it probably did look a little bit like I was being kind of crazy for doing that, but nah. Like once, you know, you do that, it's not very thick. All right, so we have our, our dog bed insert, right? We also got done the um, crochet hook case, chicken boots crochet hook case. There's the crochet hooks. Yeah, they just don't fall out. If they do, the flap holds them. Has the little notions case on the back. All right, and then we have the matching oven mitt. It's a free pattern on my site. And I have a matching um, um, apron that I made yesterday to go with it. We have the guinea pig neck <laughs> warmer that I just need to put rice in there and I'm not gonna make it stuffed full. I'm gonna make it a little bit loosey goosey and then we'll have to sew that shut. So that'll be kind of precarious. And then, oh, and then we also have the little dog coat that we made. I just don't have the strap on there because I need to figure out where that placement is for Loki. I love the little dog coat. So we did really good. Well, I did. <laughs> I hope you guys got some stuff done. So this is my niece, Loki, the pets, Cricket, my mom. I only have two things left to sew. I have two button up shirts. So what, what are you guys into tomorrow? Because I could cut something out for me to sew. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about all my gifts. I only have two button up shirts. So that's something I can do on Friday or Saturday. 
I still have buttons and buttonholes. Oh, I did make one button-up shirt for my daughter's girlfriend. So it's, it turned out really nice. It's got a little, I made a little like hanging outy thing there and a loop. They work somewhere where the shirt will work really well. <laughs> I, I think they're gonna find it funny. I hope they like it. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. I've always never liked those fabrics. And then when I uh, saw that one, I was like, well, I actually like this one. So, so yeah, so my other idea is, um, you were gonna say chatting. <laughs> so I could cut a pair of jeans out and sew those tomorrow for me. Um, I'm trying to think what else I have. I do have some weird stuff in my bins that would be really nice to clear out and finish up. But I don't know if anything, it's a guinea pig for my mom. Sea otter. An otter. A guinea pig. Sarah. It's a guinea pig, Sarah. <laughs> An otter. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> You're from California. Otherwise, I would give you a pass. <laughs> you have a pair of Morgan G. Oh, okay. I would really like a new pair of jeans right now. It says saddle, but the saddle's on the belly. <laughs> it doesn't go to the back. <laughs> oh, yeah, the imagination be wildin, for sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, if it was an otter and it was, you know, laying in the water like this, I guess the saddle would be on its belly. So, okay, okay. <laughs> I know you have to know what a sea otter looks like. I think she'll think it's funny. I was thinking like this would be nice for Haku, but I'd have to microwave it all the time. Hello, Nikki, welcome. I don't know if you're watching live or not. Thanks for being the welcoming committee, Julie. Good day. Welcome. Thanks for saying hi. I'm just at the end of the live stream though. We've been making all kinds. Well, I've been making all kinds of crazy stuff today just for my last minute gifts. So we're trying to decide what I'm gonna sew tomorrow, but it sounds like you guys are interested in jeans. Um, and I am too. So we could do that. I would love a new pair of jeans. I need a pair that are a little bigger than the ones I have right now. So. <laughs> All right, well then I will be here tomorrow, last stream of the new year. Unless you're in the guild, we do have a few things like a couple of Zooms happening. We have a anniversary party happening. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, this is probably my last live stream. I can't imagine I'll squeeze one in just because I do have this big video to edit next week and I don't really want to stress about it. And I really want to play around with Procreate Dreams. Yeah, they're a really awesome bunch here, uh, thankfully. <laughs> cool, all right. I'll, I'll cut out some jeans this afternoon. We'll do that tomorrow. Look at all this stuff. I feel very accomplished. I got the apron done yesterday. I'm pretty sure all I have left are the two button ups for the guys and that's it. That's all, that's all they get. So yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for coming. It was nice to see all of you. And I see a few of you. I know schedules are crazy and it's nice that you guys make the time to come. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, and if I don't see you before next year, happy new year and I'll see you next year, but I will be here tomorrow. Same time, same place, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, it is scheduled. So you can set a reminder on it or watch for it. I'll, I'll let you guys know on Instagram. I don't know. Just stop by. I'll see you guys tomorrow.